Chapter 1. The Fall from Grace. Once there was a man named Jonathan. He lived in a small town with his wife Sarah and their daughter Lily. Jonathan was a good man, always working hard to provide for his family. He loved his wife and daughter dearly, and they were his whole world. One evening, as Jonathan was coming home from work, he saw something terrible happen. There was a car going very fast, and it hit a child who was playing on the sidewalk. Jonathan rushed over to help, but it was too late. The child didn't survive. The whole town heard about the accident, and everyone was very sad. But something strange happened. The parents of the child blamed Jonathan for the accident. They said that because he was there, the driver got distracted and couldn't stop the car in time. They thought Jonathan was responsible for the child's death. Jonathan couldn't believe what he was hearing. He was just trying to help, but now everyone was angry with him. People started to avoid him and whisper behind his back. It felt like the whole town had turned against him. A few weeks later, there was a trial to decide if Jonathan was guilty or not. He had to go to court and tell his side of the story. Jonathan was very nervous because he didn't know what would happen. He knew he hadn't done anything wrong, but the parents of the child were very angry. In court, Jonathan tried to explain what had happened that day. He told them how he saw the accident and tried to help. He said that he didn't do anything to cause the accident. But the parents of the child were very convincing, and the judge and jury started to believe them. The trial went on for several days. Jonathan's lawyer tried to prove that he was innocent, but it was hard. The parents of the child had many people on their side, and they made Jonathan look like a bad person. After a long and tiring trial, the judge finally made a decision. He said that Jonathan was guilty of causing the accident. Jonathan couldn't believe it. He knew he hadn't done anything wrong, but the judge didn't believe him. The whole town was shocked by the verdict. Some people still believe Jonathan was innocent, but most people thought he deserved to be punished. Jonathan felt like his whole world had fallen apart. His friends turned away from him, and he didn't know who to trust anymore. Jonathan's wife, Sarah, was devastated. She knew her husband was innocent, but there was nothing she could do. They both felt like their lives were ruined. They couldn't understand why this had happened to them. And so Jonathan's fall from grace began. He went from being a respected member of the community to an outcast. People looked at him differently, as if he was a criminal. It was a very sad and difficult time for Jonathan and his family. Chapter 2. The Accusation After the trial, Jonathan and his family faced a great challenge. The whole town believed he was guilty and they treated him differently. People whispered when he passed by, and his friends avoided him. It was as if he was invisible. The parents of the child who had passed away were still very angry. They blamed Jonathan for their loss and wanted him to suffer. They spread rumours and stories about him, making the whole situation even worse. Jonathan and his family felt like they were drowning in a sea of accusations. Sarah, Jonathan's wife, couldn't understand how people could be so cruel. She knew her husband was innocent and it pained her to see him suffer. Lily, their young daughter, didn't understand why people were being mean to her daddy. She asked Sarah why everyone was so angry but Sarah didn't know how to explain it. One day, as Jonathan was walking through town, he saw the parents of the child coming towards him. He tried to avoid them, but they blocked his way. 
they looked at him with anger in their eyes and said, Hurtful things. You killed our child, the father shouted, his voice filled with rage. You deserve to be punished, Jonathan was taken aback. He tried to defend himself, saying he didn't cause the accident, but they wouldn't listen. Their hearts were filled with pain, and they needed someone to blame. Jonathan happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. As days turned into weeks, the accusations against Jonathan grew stronger. People in the town believed what they heard and saw no reason to question it. It seemed like everyone had forgotten about the anonymous witness who had come forward during the trial. The truth was being buried under the weight of anger and grief. Jonathan and his family became more isolated as time went on. They stayed at home most of the time, afraid to face the judgmental eyes of the townspeople. Sarah tried her best to comfort Jonathan and keep their spirits up, but it was becoming harder with each passing day. One evening, Sarah received a letter in the mail. It was from one of their old friends, Mary. She had moved away from the town a while ago but had kept in touch with Sarah. Mary wrote to express her disbelief at what had happened and her unwavering support for Jonathan and his family. Tears filled Sarah's eyes as she read the letter. It was the first glimmer of hope they had received since the trial. Mary believed in Jonathan's innocence and promised to help clear his name. She knew a private investigator who could look into the accident and find out the truth. With renewed hope, Sarah shared the letter with Jonathan. They decided to reach out to the private investigator and see if there was any chance of uncovering the real cause of the accident. It was a long shot, but they had nothing to lose. Days turned into weeks once again as they waited for a response from the private investigator. Jonathan and Sarah anxiously checked their mailbox every day, hoping for some positive news. They knew that their whole future depended on this investigation. Finally, one sunny morning, a letter arrived. It was from the private investigator... He said he had reviewed the case and found new evidence that could prove Jonathan's innocence. Jonathan's heart raced as he read the words. Could this be the turning point they had been waiting for? Chapter 3 The Trial Jonathan and Sarah were filled with hope as they received news of the new evidence that could prove Jonathan's innocence. They knew that this could be their chance to clear his name and bring the truth to light. With a renewed sense of purpose, they prepared for the trial. The day of the trial arrived, and Jonathan and Sarah walked into the courtroom hand in hand. The atmosphere was tense as they took their seats. Jonathan looked at the jury, hoping that they would see the truth in his eyes. The trial began with the judge explaining the process and the importance of finding the truth. Jonathan's lawyer stood up and presented the new evidence to the court. He called the anonymous witness to the stand, who was ready to testify. The witness, a kind-hearted elderly woman named Mrs. Jenkins, took the oath and began sharing her account of what happened on the day of the accident. She explained that she'd been sitting by her window, which overlooked the street where the accident occurred. She had seen everything clearly. Mrs. Jenkins described how the car involved in the accident had been speeding even before Jonathan arrived on the scene. She confirmed that Jonathan had done everything he could to help the child, but it was clear that the accident was caused by the car's mechanical failure. As Mrs. Jenkins spoke, Jonathan's heart filled with both relief and anticipation. Finally, someone was telling the truth. 
The courtroom listened intently, captivated by her words. It seemed as though a glimmer of doubt had entered their minds. Jonathan's lawyer then presented the evidence that supported Mrs. Jenkins' testimony. He showed photographs of the accident scene, highlighting the malfunctioning parts of the car. He also brought in an expert witness who explained the technical details of the mechanical failure. The jury listened carefully, and some of them began to question their initial assumptions. The parents of the childhood accused Jonathan looked visibly uncomfortable. Doubt and confusion filled the room, casting a shadow of uncertainty over the previous verdict. As the trial continued, the defence called on other witnesses who had seen the accident from different perspectives. One by one, they shared their accounts, each confirming that Jonathan had done nothing wrong the weight of the evidence started to shift in Jonathan's favour. The prosecution, realising the mounting evidence against them, tried to cast doubt on the witnesses' testimonies. They questioned their credibility and raised alternative explanations. But as the trial progressed, it became increasingly clear that the truth was on Jonathan's side. The closing arguments approached, and both sides passionately presented their cases. Jonathan's lawyer highlighted the importance of evidence and the need for justice to prevail. He implored the jury to carefully consider the facts and make a fair decision. The judge then instructed the jury to deliberate and reach a verdict. Jonathan and Sarah anxiously waited outside the courtroom holding on to each other tightly. They knew that their lives hinged on this moment. After what felt like an eternity, the jury returned to the courtroom. The air was thick with anticipation as the four persons stood up to deliver the verdict. Jonathan held his breath, his heart pounding in his chest. The four person looked at Jonathan and said, We find the defendant Jonathan not guilty. A wave of relief washed over Jonathan and Sarah. Tears of joy streamed down their faces as they realised that their nightmare was finally over. The truth had prevailed and Jonathan's innocence had been recognised. The courtroom erupted in a mix of emotions. Some cheered, while others hung their heads in shame for having believed the accusations against Jonathan. The parents of the child who had accused him sat silently, realising the mistake they had made. Jonathan and Sarah embraced each other tightly. Thankful for the second chance they had been given. They knew that they would never forget the pain they had endured, but they were determined to move forward and rebuild their lives. Chapter 4 The Unraveling The trial was over and Jonathan had been found not guilty. It was a moment of triumph for him and his family, but their journey was far from over. They had endured so much pain and suffering, and now they faced the daunting task of rebuilding their lives and finding peace. Word spread quickly throughout the town about the trial's outcome. Some people were relieved to learn that Jonathan was innocent while others felt guilty for having believed the accusations. The town was divided, unsure of how to respond to the truth. Jonathan and Sarah knew that their reputation had been tarnished, and they realised that it would take time for people to trust them again. But they were determined to prove their innocence and show the town that they were good people. They decided to reach out to the community starting with their neighbours and friends. Jonathan and Sarah went door to door, sharing their side of the story and expressing their gratitude for those who had stood by them throughout the ordeal. Some people were hesitant at first, still uncertain about what to believe. But as Jonathan and Sarah spoke with sincerity and honesty, gradually 
they started to regain the trust of their neighbours. People began to see them as victims of a terrible mistake, rather than as criminals. One by one, old friends reached out to Jonathan and Sarah, offering their support and apologies for having doubted them. It was a bittersweet reunion filled with tears of both sadness and joy. The wounds were deep, but the process of healing had begun. The townspeople who had been most vocal in their accusations against Jonathan faced a moral dilemma. They had to confront the fact that they had wronged an innocent man and caused him and his family immense pain. Some found it difficult to admit their mistakes, while others were eager to seek forgiveness. Jonathan and Sarah decided to hold a town meeting to address the community as a whole. They wanted to tell their story once again, this time with the hope of fostering understanding and healing. They hoped that by sharing their experiences, they could inspire empathy and compassion in the hearts of their neighbours. The meeting was held in the town's community centre, and the room was filled with a mix of anticipation and trepidation. Jonathan and Sarah stood before the crowd, their voices filled with emotion as they recounted their journey from being wrongly accused to being declared innocent. They spoke of the pain they had endured, the sleepless nights filled with doubt, and the isolation they had felt from community they once called home. They shared their hopes for a future, where judgment was replaced by understanding and forgiveness. Tears flowed freely as they spoke, and the room fell silent as Jonathan and Sarah concluded their heartfelt plea for reconciliation. They invited the townspeople to reflect on their actions and consider the power of forgiveness. The response was mixed. Some people approached Jonathan and Sarah, expressing remorse and seeking their forgiveness. They acknowledged their mistakes and promised to do better in the future. Others remained silent, unsure of how to respond. Days turned into weeks, and the impact of the town meeting began to reveal itself. Slowly but surely, the town started to heal. Acts of kindness and understanding became more frequent as people realised the importance of empathy and second chances. Jonathan and Sarah found solace in these small gestures. They appreciated the effort the townspeople were making to mend the rift that had formed between them. It was a long and arduous journey, but they were grateful for the progress that had been made. Lily their young daughter, was also starting to regain her innocence. She had been deeply affected by the accusations against her father and had struggled to understand why people could be so cruel. But as she witnessed the changing attitudes of the townspeople, her faith in humanity was slowly restored. The town continued to heal and Jonathan and Sarah found renewed purpose in their lives. They became advocates for justice and compassion, sharing their story with other communities, hoping to prevent similar injustices from happening elsewhere. Chapter 5 A New Beginning As the town continued to heal, Jonathan and Sarah felt a sense of relief and hope. They had come a long way from the accusations and isolation they had once faced. Now it was time for them to embrace a new beginning and rebuild their lives. Jonathan decided to pursue a new career path. He had always been passionate about woodworking and he saw this as an opportunity to turn his hobby into a profession. With Sarah's encouragement and support, he started a small woodworking business in their garage. Jonathan's craftsmanship was exceptional, and word quickly spread about his talent. People from neighbouring towns began placing orders for his beautifully crafted furniture 
and unique wooden pieces. Jonathan poured his heart and soul into his work, finding solace and purpose in creating something beautiful from raw materials. Sarah, too, found her own calling during this time of rebuilding. She had always been passionate about helping others and had a natural gift for counselling and providing emotional support. She decided to pursue a career in counselling, enrolling in evening classes at the local community college. Sarah's compassionate nature and personal experience of overcoming adversity made her a highly empathetic counsellor. She offered her services to individuals and families in need, providing a safe space for them to heal and find strength in their own journeys. Her warmth and understanding quickly earned her the trust and respect of her clients. Together, Jonathan and Sarah worked tirelessly to rebuild their lives and mend the bonds within the community. They actively participated in local events, volunteering their time and resources to make a positive impact. Through their actions, they showed the town that they were committed to healing and forgiveness. The townspeople slowly began to see Jonathan and Sarah in a new light. They admired their resilience and admired the way they had turned their adversity into opportunities for growth and change. People started to seek their advice and guidance, recognizing the wisdom and strength they had gained through their experiences. One day, as Jonathan was working in his workshop, he received a visit from the parents of the child, who had accused him. It was a moment filled with mixed emotions. The parents approached Jonathan with tears in their eyes, expressing their sincere apologies for the pain they had caused him and his family. They shared how the guilt had eaten away at them, and they couldn't find peace until they sought forgiveness. Jonathan listened to them with an open heart, acknowledging their pain and acknowledging their courage to face him. In that moment, he found the strength to forgive them. Sarah, who had witnessed the interaction, joined them and together they embraced. It was a moment of true forgiveness and reconciliation. They all understood that mistakes had been made, but through understanding and compassion, they could move forward. News of this encounter quickly spread throughout the town, becoming a symbol of hope and forgiveness. The townspeople saw the transformative power of redemption and realized that everyone deserved a second chance. Jonathan and Sarah's reputation continued to improve, and they became cherished members of the community once again. They were no longer defined by the accusations that had haunted them, but by their resilience and ability to rebuild their lives. Their journey was far from over, but they faced the future with optimism and a newfound appreciation for the strength of the human spirit. The town had learned an important lesson about the consequences of judgment and the power of forgiveness. Chapter 6 A Homecoming Jonathan and Sarah had come a long way since the accusations that had once plagued their lives. They had rebuilt their reputation, found forgiveness, and discovered a sense of belonging within their community. Now, it was time for them to celebrate their journey and embrace the happiness they had longed for. The town decided to throw a grand celebration in honor of Jonathan and Sarah. The community came together, decorating the streets with colourful banners and filling the air with music and laughter. It was a testament to the town's collective effort in healing and moving forward. As the day of the celebration arrived, the townspeople eagerly awaited the arrival of Jonathan and Sarah. They had prepared a special surprise and the excitement was palpable in the air. The whole town had gathered at the centre square, 
eager to express their gratitude and love for the couple. When Jonathan and Sarah stepped out of their house, hand in hand, they were greeted with thunderous applause. Tears of joy streamed down their faces as they realized the impact they had made on the hearts of the people around them. The mayor of the town stepped forward, a smile beaming across his face. He presented Jonathan and Sarah with a key to the town, symbolizing their homecoming and acceptance within the community. The crowd erupted in cheers, filling the square with a chorus of celebration. Jonathan took the microphone and addressed the townspeople. His voice trembled with emotion as he expressed his gratitude for the unwavering support they had received. He acknowledged the journey they had been through, the pain they had endured, and the strength they had found in one another. Sarah, by his side, spoke about the power of forgiveness and the importance of second chances. She thanked the community for their willingness to learn and grow together, emphasizing the beauty of unity and understanding. The celebration continued late into the night, with music, dancing, and laughter. The town had truly come alive, united by the triumph of love and redemption. People from all walks of life celebrated side by side, erasing the divisions that had once existed. Jonathan and Sarah shared their first dance as a symbol of their renewed bond and the joy that filled their hearts. They swayed to the music, surrounded by the love and support of their friends and neighbours. It was a moment of pure bliss, a testament to their resilience and the power of love. In the days and months that followed, Jonathan and Sarah continued to thrive within the community. They became an inspiration to others, sharing their story and reminding people of the importance of compassion and forgiveness. Their woodworking business flourished and Sarah's counselling practice thrived as well. Their lives were no longer defined by the darkness of the past, but by the light they had found in one another and within themselves. They were grateful for every moment of happiness and every opportunity to make a positive impact on those around them. Years passed, and the town thrived under the guidance of Jonathan and Sarah. Their story became a legend, passed down from generation to generation, a reminder of the transformative power of forgiveness and the strength of the human spirit. As they looked back on their journey, Jonathan and Sarah realized that their experiences had shaped them into the people they had become. They had found purpose in their pain and had discovered a deep sense of empathy and understanding. Their hearts were filled with gratitude for the journey they had traveled together. In the end, it wasn't the accusations or the trials that defined their story. It was the way they had risen above it all, embracing love and forgiveness as their guiding principles. Theirs was a tale of redemption, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, and so Jonathan and Sarah lived out their days in happiness and peace, forever grateful for the love and support they had found in their community. Their story would be remembered as a beacon of hope, inspiring others to believe in the power of forgiveness and the possibility of new beginnings. And with that, our story comes to an end. May it serve as a reminder that no matter how dark the path may seem, there is always a glimmer of light waiting to guide us home. 